Hold one. Flawless command. You are clear to begin descent to surface. Copy. Disengaging. Initiating auxiliary thrusters. Command, we are 20 seconds to atmosphere breach. Initiate burn. Rotate on break. Primary ignition. Set to 30%. Rotating. We are engine first. Altitude 20,000 feet and falling. Hold on. We are getting interference. Switch to high gain antenna. Command, confirm signal strength. You're looking great, Boudouin. Go for landing. Engines off. Pod 1 has landed. Enoch, Earth, and Revelations Oftentimes, we get so much information, that we don't know how to discern where it's coming from and more importantly, it's worth. I want to be very clear, I am giving you useless knowledge something like pseudoscience. Something for a similar-minded people to enjoy and ask questions. Questions that might possibly allow for us to explore indefinite possibilities and maybe one day, spark a young mind who can piece together these puzzles into making these simulations more tangible. With that, I'll start by giving us a small scale from which I like to judge video games of this caliber. The OR scale or objective reality scale. It is meant to show how much science went into the development of the game. The purpose of these semi-case studies are to see what literal application of these theories could potentially do for humanity and to understand the sociology surrounding the lore and characters of the games, and in doing so, the developers themselves. The scale is leveled from 1 to 10, with 1 giving the least amount of technology explaining the game. These games would have a technology that could not be readily explained or even studied, or does not have a basis in any conversation pertaining to the natural sciences. 10 would be considered to be using the highest amount scientific data and research to support its claims. These would be titles such as Call of Duty, who until roughly a decade ago, used the current political climate and military tech to showcase the entirety of a potential conflict. Or a sports game, who uses data from stats given to them by the various associations and leagues to rate the athletes on a given scale. That being said, I'll be explaining this from a pretty basic perspective without too much technical jargon. The main concept Outriders uses is the invention of an warp engine that has the capability to achieve 15% light speed using a device called the Grav Drive engine. Now, we know that the speed of light is 200 and 99 million 700 and 92,458 meters per second. 15% of this number is 44,968,868.7 meters per second. It is stated that it took 83 years to reach Enoch. This theory can be questioned overall because there has not been any manned missions into deep space to ascertain the exact timetable for travel. Along with insufficient energy for that type of expedition, the variables include particle dust, solar radiation, GRP, and much more. The engineers in the game crafting the ship, called the SM Flores, place particle lasers that auto-track any debris nearing the ship. The auto-particle lasers and kinetic shielding were used to protect the Flores, this technology has not been used in this manner in our current existence. In the lore of Outriders, it states that Enoch was directly above Earth. Meaning, it is above the plane that we would normally shoot an azimuth upon. The SM Flores must have had a trajectory that simply directed it up from an observer on a space station. This game theory correlated with the galactic colonization theory posed by the YouTubers Cool Worlds and C, in that, 
if we were to colonize their star group that had an orbit above our own, that we would have an easier time spreading to other systems. And essentially using the star's orbit as a primary transport system, with a small flight time in between inhabitable planetary bodies. I brought up the theory of galactic colonization because in this game, we began our ascent into the stars because we destroyed our own planet. Humans became the Quarians in that game universe, save that we did not have an enemy chasing us, just one that arrived several decades before us instead. First and foremost, cryogenics is not readily accessible for common citizens on the planet, such as myself, and others like me. On this website, named Cryonics, the encompassing fees start annually at 35,000. That is above the poverty line. The way cryogenics is performed in Outriders is significantly different than our real-world counterpart. Currently in 2023, Cryogenic patients are usually in the process of death, due to an illness or otherwise. In the game, cryopods are used to freeze the brain in stasis while supplying the resting body. The person going into cryostasis would feel as if only a day had passed, because the brain did not die, rather it was paused in action. Simply put, if cryogenics was posed as a solution, less than 30% of the world's population would have access. That lines up with the seats being sold on the SM Flores. The socio-economic policies displayed that govern the Earth's last days are very concise and raise numerous questions on the paradoxical nature of humanity. An excerpt from a passenger observing several empty seats during the initial flight ascension spoke on the nihilism of the looters and pillagers attempting to scale the space elevator attached to the ship. Those behind knew, at least by this point and for decades in advance, that their remains were going to be buried with the history of the Earth. Did they kill passengers in a sadistic way of saying, I can't live, so why should you? This theory empirically holds true, humans have found more value in the individual and not the whole. It allows for selfish tendencies to take precedence in the realization of imminent death. Understanding that the accounts of Enoch, and the Flores Maiden Voyage is written mostly by politicians, philanthropists and the like, as well as probably every scientist encompassing all categories in the field brings about a certain context. Even the initial descent from the Flores to Enoch's surface shows a rigid hierarchical system, and as well a clear separation between classes. More likely than not, the people who made up the bottom tier of travelers, probably low-end investors, redundant politicians, who now had no state or region to oversee so. They simply ceased to have a functioning role in society, and athletes, were awoken to low-end labor situations with little to no food or pay. The ECA, our body of scientists, the outriders are soldiers, where would that leave the rest of the people who rode to Enoch? These people should by all accounts be lumped in with the insurgents. They were awoken involuntary and then abandoned, without any hope of refuge. As recorded in the notes, the governing bodies who controlled the construction of the Ark ship were often no better than the warlords, they did business with to obtain the resources for the project. Giving the ship laborers fake raffle tickets to board the SM Flores is only a fraction of their moral ineptitude. This shows the irony in saving the world's richest people, and most logic-driven minds, apathy absent in both groups. How could the ECA have possibly thought that without a working class, the same class that built the world they stood upon, that a utopian society could exist? Humanity's greatest strength is their ability to evolve. The dynamic postulated in Outriders is amazing, though we can work together to save ourselves, we won't work together to feed our children. <laughs>